se ha estimado que solo en el punto cero, 1% de la población que se encontraba antes de la guerra en la Tierra, logró unirse al Exodus. Hello everyone, and welcome. I am Tyler from Offworld Games, and today we are going to be running through a video tutorial of upcoming Exodus Proxima Centauri, available in the App Store August 17th. So, let's uh, jump into this right off the bat. We're going to play a game versus the AI, uh, which is in skirmish mode here. You can play any game size from 1 to 5 different opponents. Um, and then afterwards, I'll take you on a brief tour of the multiplayer screen uh, to show you what you can expect when you're playing online versus real people. So here, we'll click on skirmish mode. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make a three-player game so you can kind of see the interactions between uh, three different opponents. Uh, the rules for two-player are just a little bit different. But the general gameplay is the same. Uh, most of the games you play will follow the rule set used for three-player games. So we're going to head and start with that. Um, as for the opponents, we have several AI opponents uh, that you can choose from here. They've all got a little bit of their own different play styles. Um, and these all will continue to get updated as the game is played by you. Uh, we're going to use some of the, the most common uh, and advanced kind of learning techniques on these AIs so that we can continue to improve them and uh, we're even hoping that this will produce an AI meta. So we'll see We'll see what happens with this. But for now, I'm just going to click Auto Opponents, let it select any of them that we prefer, and we're going to launch right into the game here. So we start with the upkeep stage. Uh, this is kind of the bookkeeping stage of the game where we go through getting more population on our planets and collecting our income. You can see the animations for that to tell us where um, or how things are interacting. And if you also notice the player tabs here on the left is kind of the quick reference of information. Uh, it shows how much money you have of each of the three resource types, shows how many population cubes you have available. And there's more information contained in this if you click on it. Um, I will show you that shortly. But first, on to politics. The second stage of the game is the council stage, and if at any point you need to see what uh, is coming up next, all you must do is hover over the top here. It kind of drops down to the timeline of every turn. Um, there's a, on the left, the main timeline itself, which shows you the, the stages that if you played the board game you're familiar with, and on the right are the different steps for these. The game does these automatically, so uh, you probably don't need to refer to this very often, but for those of you who are new to the game, this is a great reference to see what's coming up and what to plan for. So, we have three political options. We have military support, which gives me a free Dark Raider, uh, which is a type of ship that comes with the game. Military tech, uh, we can reduce technologies that we research by 2 CP, CP being our primary currency. And civilian tech says researching new civilian technologies is reduced by negative two CP. So uh, we can go ahead and reduce the cost of things. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with military tech here. We'll reduce this and I'll go ahead and bid one. So you can see when you click on a political card, uh, just voting for it gives you, uh, gives it a choice, uh, or gives it one voting power from your player, but you can increase your voting power by adding uh, CP to the vote using these buttons around the um, indicator here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bid one CP for this. Click the check mark to move on and we can animate through the choices. You see I picked uh, one CP and a vote so this went up by two and it looks like military tech has one thanks to the vote from green. Now we move on to the bonus action proposal. If you look to the left, you can see all of our player tabs are located underneath a little banner. This banner tells you what uh, position within the High Council your player has. The Chancellor has special privileges every turn, one of which uh, is that they get to make the decision about what the bonus action will be. And this bonus action is proposed by the Vice Chancellor. So I have the option to choose Research or Build Ships. We're going to choose Build Ships as our our uh, bonus action and push OK. I'll explain more about what these actions do when we move on to the action phase. If at every point you need to reference the bonus action is on the turn, you can hover over the top here. Um, and this also gives you a brief guide about what each of the actions do. Now, after we vote for politics, we move on to the election. This is the part of the turn where we determine 
who is going to be in what order on the left side here. Now, this doesn't just determine who gets to make the decisions about the bonus action. This also determines who gets to go first and last in the coming rounds. The Chancellor always has the advantage, and we move from top to bottom, so the bottommost spot always has the disadvantage. Uh, this means that in actions and reactions, Chancellors go first, but in moving and the like, the Chancellor goes last. Uh, that way they can see what everybody else has done before they make their decisions about what they need to do, and uh, however they get the first opportunity to react. So we're going to go ahead and bid to be the Chancellor. I'm going to, I like being in this position, so I'm going to go ahead, I want to bid 2 CP. Now the problem with the Chancellor is I can't break ties in my own favor, but it doesn't matter. Green has outbid me with 3, so you see the tabs get shuffled for the turn order, and it's time to move on to the action phase. So now that we're here, we're going to be able to choose two actions to perform in our turn. They are either trade, banking, research, buy upgrades, build ships, or mining. I'll take a moment to explain what each of these actions do. Trade allows you to go into the market. The market is a uh, quick reference up here on the left hand corner. And you can see that this gives you the marketplace sell and buy rates. So, I can buy Axinium and Phasium, which are the other two resources, the red one and the green one, by spending CP. Or, I can sell Axinium and Phasium to give me CP. And the buys are on the top and the sells are on the bottom. Uh, notice that there's two numbers here, a white number and a red number. That's because the red number are rates that come with advanced trading. You can see that there is a little uh, tooltip on the top of this that says advanced trading uses the red price. Now, why might I want to purchase Axinium and Phasium? Well, Axinium, the red resource, is used in purchasing ships, and the green resource, Phasium, is used in building or improving your ships with upgrades. Um, and you can see when I hover over the market tab, I also get a quick reference to the costs of things in the market. These are upgrades you can unlock and purchase for your ships later in the game. And the better of the choices always cost a little bit of phasium as well as CP. So that's what the, the uh, advantages of the two different resources. Now, you'll notice underneath trade that there is this little option here. This is the reaction that is associated with picking trade for the turn. I will explain a little bit more about what reactions do once we get to them. So the second choice in action is banking. And banking is pretty straightforward. It just gives you 4 CP. Now, this is a fine option if you are out of money. Uh, it's, it gives you something to do with your turn, even if there's like a few things that you want uh, to do. And one of the most powerful parts about the banking card is that research is the reaction. Uh, but what is research? Uh, research allows you to spend CP to gain new technologies. Uh, to, so I'll take a minute to show you where these technologies are as you get a quick reference to them, and I will also introduce the player tab. So if we come over to our quick reference on the left, you can click on the box that contains any player's name. And this pushes out a quick reference card to tell you what uh, the status is in the game. You can see on the far right, we have schematics for our ships. These are what we add our upgrades to and affect the ships on the board later in the game. Uh, right now we're at the very bare minimum for what we start with with the game. Uh, but these will fill in as we go, and you can push the right and left button to see your other player's loadouts. Helps you plan for things when we're moving and fighting later. This also gives you a reference to which ships you have on the board. We have only two active ships. These will fill in as more ships hit the table. We also have this projected victory point screen here. This kind of helps you plan to see uh, who's winning and who's not. Um, how many points you need to gain in order to win the game later, etc, etc. There's min many different ways to gain victory points. I'll walk through these at the end of the turn uh, so that you can see the, the, the modes to victory here. Um, but what we're interested in right now is looking at the technologies we can research. You notice there's this little indicator right here to help you out, to, to show you what technologies are available. We can click this tab, view all technologies, to go to a reference guide uh, of the tech, tech tree. So, 
This is looks very similar to purchasing upgrade screen, uh, but what I can do is I can take any of these and I can click on it and a little explanation tooltip shows up on the right. Uh, for example, this is the SSL Canon. To research it, it costs me nine CP right now and I'm getting a minus two discount to the original price because of the military tech law. Now you notice this is what we put into place at the beginning of the game when we voted for the political decision. So you can see how these political decisions affect gameplay as we continue on. This allows me to buy and place SSL cannons on my ships. Um, and in combat, cannon allows two shots rolling two dice instead of just one. It's pretty powerful, uh, but we're probably not going to research it this time. So we can go back to our overview by clicking the button here, and we can close this by clicking anywhere outside the tab. So that's an introduction to the research screen. Uh, next up, we have buy upgrades. Like I said before, if you have upgrades researched, these that appear at the bottom of the screen. You can install them onto your ship blueprints. I'll be sure to show you what that looks like this turn. Build ships is pretty straightforward. It allows you to build ships to add to the board and uh, we will be able to see that in action for the bonus action this turn. And then mining. Mining is probably uh, something we'll not do early in the game, but we will certainly do later in the game. And it has to do with managing your resources on the board. So I'm going to go ahead and click the minimize tab here to show you uh, a bit of the player board while we've got the, the chance here. Go ahead and move this to the side. You notice that all of these windows we can move out to wherever we need, we need to while we're examining the board. Kind of a nice feature for the game. So let's take a look. At the board here, we have... Uh, our home square we are the blue player and if you hover your mouse over any of the squares it will pop up a little help reference that shows you what the population is on the planet how many resources are left uh, and what ships are in orbit above it now notice right underneath the title Terra Nova the name of my home world uh, we have a little CP icon and it says four out of five that's because every turn I mine my planet, the amount of CP goes down. And if I have zero CP on my planet, I do not get the CP for the turn. So mining allows you to go into the planet and increase the number of resources you're available to get. So I could take that number four and I could bump it up to a five by mining. Now during the mining action, you get to do this four different times. Uh, it's usually best to spread this out among your planets. Uh, and, and we will see this later in the game. Uh, there's one other feature that I need to show, and that is the planets that are outlined in orange or brown. Uh, they also have a little icon underneath them, this one, this three, and this two. This is the location of the Centaurian Resistance. They are uh, essentially AI opponents built into the game that we can battle, and if we beat them, we get special rewards. They are increasing in difficulty one, two, and three as, uh, as we go. Uh, this turn, I'll try to fight the level one Centaurian resistance so you can see what the battles look like, um, but I'm definitely not going to be kitted out enough to handle the two or three once we get there. So first action that we're gonna go ahead and choose is the research action. Um, so I go ahead and click on it. You see it gets highlighted. This has the trade reaction, which doesn't interest us very much right now. We'll go ahead and click, click OK. I am going to, so you can see when the research window pops up here that we've got a couple highlighted options and then a couple that are not highlighted. These options are the ones that we can afford, while as the options below are the ones that we can't. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some shields because I want to protect my ships as I go into battle. Uh, thankfully, this costs me nothing because of the military tech law, so I'm going to push OK. Go ahead and research those EMG shields. Now, the EMG shields give you only one extra hit point, um, and you can see that after the research is done, it pops up at the bottom of my tab here. This is a quick reference for the players to see what every opponent has researched. And it looks like our red player here, Hanzia, has got the Phasium Refinery. Now, this turn, I plan to buy another battle carrier, which is the uh, carrier ship here, because it carries my population, and I want to take as many planets as possible this turn. So we're going to go ahead and pass on the bonus action. But notice, I've got three options to choose from here. 
Player one chose to trade for his primary action, which means that the build ship's bonus action is available. He passed, he is the first option, and we can see over here in the history that he has passed his turn. Um, but there's also two little population cubes underneath this uh, reaction. I can react to an opponent's action for two population cubes, or I can react to my own for one population cube. Population management is really important in Exodus and planning out your actions so that you can optimize saving your population to put on other planets is ideal. Um, so we're actually not going to choose any of these reactions this turn. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pass. And we see Red Player has passed as well. So now we move on to the second action. Because I use research as my first action, I cannot use it now. But there is an upgrade in the game that allows me to do it twice. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and buy upgrades. And one reason that I like this is my second action is that the reaction is to bank. Uh, so my plan this turn is going to be to buy some upgrades and bank afterwards so that I can afford some ships after I purchase my upgrades. So we come to the buy upgrades screen here. Notice that our hollow table where the map has changed to so show our ships. And we can zoom in and out of that to get a better view or, or a zoomed out view or a zoomed in view. Uh, it's to buy upgrades, I simply take my shiny new EMG shield and I drag it off of the market and I stick it onto the slot on my ship. Here comes another one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add uh, two shields to our battle carrier and one shield to our dark raider and push OK. Now, if I replace upgrades at any point, this window will get filled so that I don't just toss my upgrades away as I go. And you can shuffle them around using this upgrade bay um, in the process of taking your upgrade turn. And now I'll push OK. So we have a little animation here to show your opponents what you've upgraded. This is especially useful if you come into a game after a while um, to walk through the upgrades and the, the pieces that have happened. So looks like our opponent at the top Green here has taken his research reaction. Um, he spent one population cube. If you look at his planet, he started with five population. Now he's down to four. And here we are at five. I'm going to go ahead and choose my banking reaction. And my one population comes up here to show that I have spent it. Um, any player can react on anybody's reaction, so it's good to keep track of who's reacting to what. Okay. Now we move on to the build ships. This is the bonus action. If you remember, we voted for this in the political stage at the beginning of the game, or we chose it because we were the chancellor. Uh, so we have the opportunity to build more ships. We can see our four options here uh, based by their names in the game and then uh, the cost of it underneath it. So I'm going to build another battle carrier because this delivers population to planets. Once I click it, it says limit reached. I can only have two ships of each type on the board at a time. Notice when I clicked on it, my uh, money also went down. Uh, but if you want to reverse your play, you can't just click on it again. You got to come down to this refresh button. You click it, it unwinds it, and it allows you to uh, choose again. Um, also notice that the confirm button here is an exclamation mark. This is a warning that you haven't done anything yet. It changes to the check mark when you've done something. It changes back when we undo. So, well, let's build this battle carrier. Uh, it fills in. We'll select it, and you can see it has been added to our planet. Now, you notice we just very, very quickly skipped the WMD phase. This is the phase where we fire rockets at each other if we have them. Thankfully, the game hasn't escalated to that point yet. Uh, it is usually a tactic that devolves very dramatically and turns the game into just who can bomb who first. So next we move on to the conquest stage. In conquest, this is where we get to move our ships, uh, take new planets and fight each other. Uh, and at the beginning of each conquest phase, we get an opportunity to adjust our upgrades. Uh, we just installed upgrades. We don't want to move anything around, but this matters if ships get destroyed. Uh, you can take upgrades from ships that are not on the board anymore and put them on new ships to make sure that they're uh, just powerful going into this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and leave this as is and move on. Now, this is where order matters. Look, now it's green's turn. We started with red, then to, then to me at blue, and then up to green. That's because the chancellor wants to see who put what where before they make any decisions about what they're going to do. So, 
We'll go ahead and split my population between my two battle carriers. Uh, this is the part where I get to take population from my planets and put them onto my ships. Uh, you can see that uh, we have 100% arrow. We never have an opportunity to not put population on, on uh, ships, but sometimes we do run into problems trying to put population on planets, which we'll see here in a moment. So now that we're all mounted up, it's time to move. Uh, to plot movement, I have two options. I can click on a planet to select all the ships there and move them all at once. This way it's easy to navigate full fleets around that you want. Otherwise, what I need to do is I need to click on my different ship options here. You see they get highlighted on the board, and the planets that they're allowed to move to are the only ones that are filled in. So we're going to move the Battle Carrier and the Dark Raider over here. And now that I only have one Battle Carrier left, I'm going to go ahead and click that and move it over here. And I push Confirm. We go to Animation on the Hollow Table showing the ships flying to their planets. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier about chance of getting to the planet. If you notice on the board, the two planets that I'm over have uh, debris field in them, or moons, or rings, or asteroids, however you want to uh, flavor them. Uh, and this can ruin navigation when you're trying to deploy to the planet. So when I click deploy, you see I've only got a 50% chance of my... Uh, my population even making it but I can increase that chance by adding another population now this arrow tells you the chance of getting at least one population to the planet I have a uh, three and four chance that it will arrive and I've got that chance twice so we're gonna go ahead and give this a try look at that I got one of both of my population there uh, if two had deployed, it's okay, though, because immediately afterwards I can take the extra population that went to the planet, move it back to my ship, so that I got a chance to deploy with it somewhere else. But that did not happen this time. I want to leave my one population on these planets so I can collect the resources next turn. And I'm going to go ahead and push OK and move on to the move. Now you see green did pick up their extra population they deployed. So now, let's fight. I'm going to take all of my ships, and I'm going to throw them over here on Nerthus, where a level 1 Centaurian resistance is, uh, so that we can we can see what the fighting animations look like. So here we go. We move into the planet. We get this little overview. We see our unknown ship floating in the background, uh, and we're going to go in to fight the Centaurian 1. Now we have some data on what the ship has. This ship has one shield, and this ship has two cannons. Um, my fleet has seven shields and three cannons, and it's worth five victory points. So we'll go ahead and push go. We can see our ships warp in above the planet, and we've got the battle raging. This, um, both of my carriers have hit here. Uh, every single cannon on a planet is worth one, or on a planet, on a ship, is worth one dice roll. And that dice roll represents firing at um, your opponent's ships. Now, on a 5 or a 6, you hit. So there's a one-third chance of hitting. Uh, and we can see that I rolled a 6 for both my carriers here, which means that I get to now apply the damage to my Centaurian Resistance opponent. So to do that, I'm simply just going to click on it, and notice this is the only opponent, so my damage will be assigned automatically. And I blow him up, he fires back, he doesn't hit anything, and I win. Now, here's the battle report summary. This could be as big as six players long uh, if we have a battle between all six. It has only happened for us once in testing, and it is epic. Um, so I hope that during your games of Exodus, you get a chance to do a six-player wide battle. Now, I've defeated the Centaurian Resistance, so it's given me this reward here. Um, this reward allows me to research a technology for free um, in this case, it is the uh, basic politics or research option. I'll let you go ahead and see what that does on your own. Um, or I can hold on to this card for the end of the game, and it's worth two victory points. Uh, and we've got this little thing to give you the, or these little text clues here to help you out. So this is just a battle report summary. You will see this for every single battle that goes on into the game, so you're aware of what your opponents are winning. Um, however, you will only see battle scenes that you are involved in. So, now I've defeated my opponent, you can see the color of the hex has changed, it is now a neutral hex. I'll go ahead and try to deploy population from both ships. I got one on there, now I have 
four different planets. Uh, pretty good, pretty good starting turn overall. Um, now, at various points in the game, you will have the opportunity to cash in your Centaurian rewards. I don't really want to use this one. I think it's going to be worth more for VP in the end of the game. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass by pushing the check mark here. Those uh, two victory points, like I said, uh, are probably worth more to me at the end of the game. But you might be asking, how do I win a game of Exodus? Well, it's all about these victory points that you collect throughout the game. The main way to gain victory points is to take planets. You notice on the board, there's this little icon right next to the, uh, the resource that the planet contains. That is how many victory points the planet is worth. On Tewaz, I'm collecting two victory points for being the person who is has the most population on the planet. Sagoma is also worth two, and Nerthus is also worth two, but you can see there's some planets on the board that are worth four. Now, typically, if a planet is worth more victory points, it contains fewer resources, a uh, little balancing in the game here. Um, and there's also a quick reference to the victory points in this turn indicator here. The game of Exodus has seven turns. We've just started turn two. You'll recognize some of the features from uh, the beginning of this video, describing how the turn work. And you can see that currently Blackwater, the green player, and myself are tied at 13 victory points with red just behind at nine. Um, these are projections, however, for the end of the game because some ways of scoring victory points do not matter until the game is over. As it stands, the static victory points are on the left. Blackwater has four from his one planet. Hanzia has two from his one planet. And I have eight. That is from my three planets and my Centaurian resistance reward. Now, how can we check that? We're going to go back to the player tab. We can see that the victory points, the projected victory points, are up here. This is a breakdown of how many points people have from what. You can see my six points from planet control my two points from my Centaurian rewards, which are put uh, located right here. As a quick reference, we can see all our rewards by clicking on that button. Um, we also get points for our political title and however many hexes we occupy on the board at the end of the game, but these only count at the end. So five of my points do not count right now, hence only eight VP instead of 13 on the quick reference here. So, that is a turn of Exodus. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that it taught you how to play. We look forward to seeing you for the release on August 17th. Exodus will be available for PC and Mac on Steam and we are planning mobile to come out later this year. Uh, I'll see you all later this week.